Today we're going to continue talking about the Bone Splitter Tribes. Horns of the Beast. As befitting their savage nature, the Bone Splitter War Clans fashion themselves in the image of a great beast. While the Wurgog prophets act as the guiding spirit that controls the greater entity, the mobs of hollering boys form its mighty jaws, encircling and clamping down upon the Uruk's prey. The Wurgog prophets are the spiritual and war leaders of the Bone Splitters, and it is incredibly rare although not entirely unheard of, for any war clan to fight without one of these enigmatic figures guiding them. When battle is joined, the prophet stands in the eye of a storm of frenzied bone splitters, his boys and their boars a roaring typhoon that rages around him and takes shape according to his mystic will. With a stamp of his feet and a wave of his staff, he divides his boys into mobs depending on the aspect of Gorka Morka they best represent, be it cunning, brutality, or sheer unhinged ferocity. These seemingly unintelligible commands are obeyed instinctively and immediately by the surrounding bone splitter warriors. Guided by the Wa spirit, each mob naturally gravitates towards others of its kind on the battlefield to form a ruck. To call the Ruck's foundations, excuse me, formations, is perhaps to oversell the Bone Splitter's capacity for military organization, but they do function with a surprising level of cohesion, much like the manner in which a pack of girish ice wolves hunts as an uncannily instinctual group. So do the rocks work together to bring down prey many times their size. When multiple rocks gather together, the result is an army that operates as if it were a single megalithic beast made up of thousands of whooping rooks. The boys that form the head of the beast are known as cop rucks. They can range in size from a few mobs right up to a sprawling horde of many hundreds, depending on the size of the war clan. War docks and more boys, those or rooks with the strongest connection to the wa fight at the center of the cop rucks. The Wurgog prophet himself is typically found amongst them, protected by a wall of painted flesh while he summons the primal foot stomps of Gorka Morka to squash his enemies. Often fighting alongside the cop rucks, are the Teeth Rucks, carrying a huge monster-killing spear known as a Gork Tooth. They form the vicious fangs of the beast. This is a portion of this army that was created because they were too proud of the uh, big Stabba, or whatever they're called, models from the Savage Orcs from Fantasy. Those who fight in the Teeth Rocks are usually the most feral and ferocious of the Bone Splitters. Those who froth at the mouth at the mere thought of impaling their prey with a big, 
length of wood. These Uruks also have absolutely no sense of self-preservation, and they will happily charge into the thickest sections of the enemy line ignoring the hails of bullets and bolts raining down on upon them. The beast's jaws are made up of the gob rucks. These warriors are divided into two main groups, one focused on close combat, known as the brutal ruck, and one with large numbers of bow-wielding lads, known as the cunning ruck. Just like Gork and Mork, these two halves work together to create havoc in battle. One repeatedly smashes the enemy in the face, while the other fills them full of arrows or bashes them from behind. Most Iron Jaws scorn the use of ranged weapons because there is little joy to be had in flinging a bit of wood at some distant target. For the Bone Splitters, however, the bow is a powerful and ubiquitous weapon. There are some war clans who field nothing but hordes of arrow boys whose breathtaking inaccuracy hardly matters when they can fill the skies with thick clouds of stone-dipped missiles. Finally, there are the mounted snaga rucks, which act as the horns of the beast. Led by the maniac weird knobs and made up of savage boar boy maniacs, they use their high mobility to attack from an unexpected quarter before driving deep into enemy lines, goring ragged holes in the enemy army with their tusks, stone blades, and reckless savagery. From the rocky bluff, Juck Jor could see his lads surge towards their prey like a gigatroth's snapping maw. The blue-coated humans stood fast in a rigid square, puffs of gray smoke rising from their fire sticks as whooping boar boys circled them. Corka morka pork the wargog prophet roared, thrusting out his squig stick and hopping on one foot. At his command, the doe crushes brutal rucks bounded forward, jagged clumps of painted Uruk warriors, eyes ablaze with green madness. The cunning rucks rushed in from behind, firing hails of arrows that rained down on the humans' ranks. Jukjor gave a toothy grin as pierced screams split the air. The blue coats were fixed between the Gigadroth's gnashing teeth. Yet though Jukgor saw many humans tumble to the ground, blood spilling from arrow-riddled torsos, their line still held. Drakabrak, Jukjor cursed. The humans refused to give way despite the fangs clamped around them, like a particularly chewy piece of sinew. The prophet leapt and slammed his hands together with a thunderous crack. Instantly, his circling boar boys wheeled and plunged into the flanks of the human square, like twin horns sinking into flesh. Bodies flew as the snorting beasts slammed home, and the blue coats' stern defense crumbled to pieces. Grokobrog, said Chukjor, satisfied. The Gigadroth had its prey by the throat, and there was no escape.
organization of a big rock. Cop rocks are the thick skull wrapped around the wargog prophet. Their job is to help channel the wa energy generated by the clan. The wargog prophet is the mind of his war clan. With visions sent by Gorkamorka, he guides his boys towards the best hunting grounds and biggest fights. Snaga rucks are the horns of the war clan. Led by deranged maniac weird knobs, they plunge deep into the enemy's flanks, causing absolute mayhem. Cut-in rucks are gob rucks led by morka bosses, and they are particularly good at sticking the enemy where it hurts before they bash them up. Teeth rucks wield huge cork tooth spears. These massive weapons are carried into battle with the sole purpose of killing the largest creatures in the realm. Brutal rucks are gob rucks led by the fearsome Gorka bosses. Their mobs excel in the thick of a fight. Bone splitters of the realms. Bone splitters can be found all across the eight realms, rampaging across the land in search of monsters to slay. Their customs, rituals, and favored ways of war are as varied as the lands they call home, but all are equally terrifying foes to face when the law takes hold of them. Bone Grins No other war clan has brought down as many great beasts of the realms as the Bone Grins. Hunters without peer, these hardy Uruks drive their prey into a maddened frenzy with volleys of amber-tipped arrows, causing them to whirl about and charged right into the Bone Grins' waiting spears. Though they originally hailed from the plains of Gur, the Bone Grins are a nomadic war clan and have traveled from the nightlands of Shish to the scalding seas of Akshi on their great hunts. Countless Uruk boys have abandoned their old clans and sought out the Bone Grins along the way and the war clan has grown truly vast. They can field seemingly endless numbers of arrow boys and savage Uruks, dominating their foes with sheer belligerence and weight of numbers. This mass of green flesh is liberally smeared with blue war paint, for blue is a sacred color according to the Bone Grins, said to attract the fiercest beast spirits. Leading the war clan in its endless search for quality bones is the Wurgog prophet Gurkok Weird Teeth. This wise and old Uruk is gaudily clad in the finest bones to which he chatters almost incessantly. Indeed, it is from this collection that Gurkok gathers his auguries. After inhaling a great draft of bockweed, the prophet will have an intense discussion with the ivory tusks that dangle from his ears, or the collection of rattling bones that hang from his belt. He will then boldly proclaim the next direction that the Bone Grins should charge off in. Guided by these visions, the Bone Grins have sought out many legendary monsters, long thought extinct, and then slaughtered them. The mountain-sized glacier horn, the shadow drake of lost Narkoth, 
the Nihilith of Vond, and the Blue Flame Magma Droth. All of these mythical beasts have met the same grisly fate. The bone grins have managed to accumulate impressive quantities of amber realm stone taken from the beast graveyards of Gur, and their prophets have mastered the art of crafting arrowheads dipped with shards of this osseous substance, which is rife with the animalistic essence of the realm of beasts. Bone Grin's warriors riddle their prey with scores of these rage-inducing missiles. As the arrowheads sink deep into the enemy's flesh, they not only cause horrific damage, but also drive the victim into a furious, bestial frenzy as the potent magic of Gur seeps into their blood. Like a maddened rhinox, the creature will abandon all thoughts of retreat and charge at its tormentors in a red haze of fury. There is, of course, a not insignificant risk that the enraged victim will get its wish and crush several bone grins into gory paste. But this bold tactic does ensure that the war clan always gets its prize. As well as proving highly effective at baiting monsters to come close enough for a good walloping, the use of these amber-tipped weapons has also wreaked particular havoc upon armies that rely upon maintaining their shape and cohesion in battle. When the Bone Grins battled the elite Free Guild regiments of Hammer Hall during the brutal Drummer's War, their rage inducing arrows caused the veteran great swords of the Steel Lions Regiment to break their usually immaculate formation and charge headlong at the approaching Oroks. Hopelessly exposed, one of the finest units of shock troops in the twin-tailed city was trampled to death by charging boar boys, much to the amusement of the crazed greenskins. Gurkok uses similar methods to create the big teeth wielded by his big stabbers. The war clan boasts several of these weapons, crafted from the teeth or tusks of monsters that the bone grins have slain and capped with amber bone. Indeed, the prophet believes that each of these weapons embodies a gnashing fang of Gorkamorka, and when he has gathered all of the great green god's teeth, he will sink them into the bedrock of Gur. This will cause the realm's world spirit to spill out, so that Gurkok and his boys can drink it up. According to the Wargog prophet, this will cause them to grow as big as mountains. The bone grins take great pride in their self-proclaimed status as the finest beast hunters in all the realms, and it is common practice amongst the boys of the war clan to fashion totems from the remains of their most memorable kills. The war clan's rucks each seek to emulate a particular totemic animal that they believe possesses desirable qualities. These mobs carry totems and other icons crafted from the skin and bones of that creature, which they believe will grant them its formidable attributes. For example, the Snaga Rock, led by maniac Weird Knob Ukatuk, idolizes the notoriously ill-tempered Hammerhead New a shaggy-furred grazing beast 
that can pulverize an Uruk's ribcage with a single blow of its boulder-like skull. Ukaduk's favorite staff is crafted from the shin bone of one of these beasts, and when he and his lads charge into the enemy, they do so with the mountain-shaking force of a hammerhead stampede. Ice Bone Daubed in swirling white tattoos with their hair dyed a frosty blue, the ice bone hail from the glacier caverns of the sky-blind tundras in Gur. This unforgiving land of howling ice gales and sudden deadly blizzards breeds the hardiest war boars, and in and it is these belligerent creatures that the ice bone ride to battle. The ice bones mounted rocks ride circles around their prey, hacking away with icy weapons that freeze their quarry's blood before charging in for the killing blow. To the ice bone, the war boar is not just a mount, it is a sacred creature. They worship a god of these foul tempered beasts, and they claim. Gorkamorka once rode into battle. The titanic snow white behemoth known as Shadatusk. Pale furred war boars are believed to be the god beast's progeny, which may explain their uncommon hardiness and ferocious nature. It is not rare to see one-armed or one-footed iceborne riders, their appendages bitten clean off by their vicious mounts. According to legend, when the great green god battered a shadow tusk into submission, he tore one of the beast's icy horns off. As it struck the ground, it splintered into a hundred shards forming the spirit glaciers within which the ice bone dwell. These holy sites are rife with the power of Gorkamorka, and their azure caverns echo to the roars of animal spirits trapped in the ice. The ice bones hew their weapons from the walls of their cavern dwellings, crafting crude chompas and stickas of blue ice and arrowheads that shimmer with freezing cold wah energy. When these sink into flesh, the latent magic within is unleashed in a blast of lethal cold. A snow griffin or catanuck struck with such a weapon finds its limbs seizing up, the blood that flows within turned to icy crystals. Slowed to an awkward stumbling gait, it is unable to flee as the ice bone wheel around it on their war boars, hacking away gleefully with each pass. Rhyme ice slowly creeps along the beast's body, Soon, it is little more than a frozen statue, and the Oruks can begin the process of carving it apart and taking its bones. The ice bone look upon the ogors of the beast claw raiders with particular awe, and often trail along behind the creature's winding maw paths on the very edge of the Everwinter. On occasion, their enthusiasm gets the better of them, and they stray into the supernatural snowstorm, ending up rooted to the spot as living statues. These luckless frozen rooks are sometimes used as totems by their fellow boys, brandished enthusiastically in battle. Drackfoot. Even by
by the standards of the bone splitters, the red haired Drakfoot are regarded as a strange breed. The power of the Wa swirls around this shamanistic war clan like a thick mist, giving rise to many war docks and weird knobs. When the Drakfoot embark on a great hunt, they seek not creatures of flesh and bone, but demonic and spectral horrors. They clobber these spooks with beast-infused weapons that blast apart incorporeal matter as easily as they crush skulls and shatter limbs. The Drakfoot worship the great green god with a furious intensity uncommon to Uruk kind. Their wargog prophets glow with barely restrained power, their eyes blazing and their fingertips spitting sparks of savage energy. Any fellow greenskin they suspect of not paying Gorkamorka his due is subject to a brutal and prolonged bludgeoning. If they are fortunate not in, not to be blown to bits with a bolt of bright green magic. Yet the Drakfoot reserve their greatest hatred not for those beings made from the raw stuff of the earth, but for those who spawned by sorcery and dark magic. The Ashland Gore Lakes, they have a really good Shakespeare festival there too, where the Drakfoot make their home have long been plagued by the demonic legions of the blood god Corn, and, since the Sheish Necroquake, by cowled spirits in thrall to the great necromancer Nagash. Unforgivably, neither of these foes contain any bones for the Drakfoot to take, or still, they wreak havoc upon the bone splitters' ancient hunting grounds, disturbing their ritual offerings to Gorkamorka. The Drakfoot see themselves as crusaders of the great green god. They believe their holy task is to clobber every demon and geist in the realms so the greenskins can get back to the right and proper business of killing monsters. The Drakfoot's mystical powers and furious faith make them remarkably efficient at this task. Their war docks conduct hordes of boys in manic, stomping dances that channel the wall. Each clattering footfall disrupts the magic that binds their demonic foes to the mortal realms, agonizing and enraging them. Crimson tattoos painted with the boiling blood of the gore lakes writhe and hiss as they ward the Drakfoot against unnatural magics. Meanwhile, the Uruk's weapons infused with the shackled spirits of furious drac beasts and wielded with utterly single-minded conviction can temporarily cause geists to turn corporeal long enough to be smashed apart in an explosion of spectral matter. And I think it is there well, no. We're going to read about Gordrak, the Fist of Gork. Amidst the yelling and bawling of the Iron Jaw clans, a single bass roar echoes louder than the rest. It heralds the destruction of armies and the death of civilizations, for it is the voice of Gordrak, the Fist of Gork. Mightiest of all Uruks, he is an unstoppable avalanche of primal wrath, the chosen champion of the great green god. 
Gordrak's name has become a byword for terror across the mortal realms. Even the noble houses of Azir, safely ensconced with their star-scraping towers, have heard of the rampages of this green-skinned hurricane of destruction. He is the Fist of Gork, the megaboss of megabosses, the savage fury of Gur made manifest. To most Iron Jaws, he is nothing less than the living incarnation of their god's brutal favor. War clans from all corners of the realms have flocked to swell the ranks of Gordrak's great wa. For every Oruk worth his iron wishes to fight at the side of Gorkamorka's favored son. Many Oruks believe that the great green god formed Gordrak whole during the Age of Chaos. The story goes that in their darkling mission to enslave the war clans of Gur, Archaon's legions established a series of dread olds throughout the greenskin held lands of the Wild Art. Taking offense to this, Gork slammed his mountain sized fist into the center of the network of fortifications. The raging storm of Wa energy swiftly reduced the fortresses to rubble. When Gork's fist finally dissipated, it left behind a shard of knuckle bone. As the green fire seared away its surface, a hulking megaboss was revealed within. This megaboss was swift to rally the iron jaws of the wild art, crushing the remainder of the dread old Castellans as they attempted to recover from the brutal divine in intervention. Such is not the only story told of Gordrak's origin. The Fang Crusher's war clan insists that Gordrak was once one of their own, and boasts loudly of their supposed connection to the Fist of Gork. The Bone Splitters, meanwhile, believe him to be sent by the Great Green God to lead a hunt for the beast spirit of Gur itself. Ultimately, it matters little where Gordrak came from. Certainly, the Fist of Gork will never confirm nor deny any of these wild tales, for he cares only for ushering in the next great war and drowning the realms in a tide of unthinking violence. In battle, there is nothing subtle about Gordrak. Riding atop the huge maw crusher known as Big Teeth, one of the only beasts almost as brutishly aggressive as Gordrak himself, he leads through violent example. Fighting at the head of his vast green horde, Gordrak and his mount plow into the deepest concentration of enemy warriors. Entire ranks are crushed under Big Teeth's charge, while limbs and heads are sent flying by strikes from the fist of Gork's twin axes. These blades are especially deadly to enemy commanders. Smasha excels at cleaving through the armor of warrior kings, whereas Cunnin delights in spilling the magically charged blood of wizards. Long ago, these two axes were joined together to form the World Choppa, the legendary axe of Gorkamorka said to be forged to me of metal ripped from Sigmar's own throne. It was first bestowed upon Urgrak Bonefist during the Age of Myth. How Gordrak came to wield it is unknown, but he was quick to split it into his two trusty blades. When asked why he did so, the Fist of Gork claimed that it was to make the weapon twice as killy, before brutally hacking apart the Orelk who asked such a stupid question. So great is Gordrak's bestial authority that all worshippers of Gorkamorka, 
not merely the Oroks, are enthused by the supernova of Wa energy emanating from his muscled frame. Many madcap shamans of the gloom spite gets swear blind that it is the fist of Gork's leering face etched onto the surface of the bad moon. Ogor tribes murmur in awe of the time Big Teeth chewed through a stone horn, spitting out the gems, studying the beast's innards, before Gordrak demanded seconds for himself. Drogoths don't really know why they follow Gordrak, but their herds lumber along in his wake anyway, even their tiny minds acknowledging the primacy of the mightiest megaboss of them all. Throughout the Realm Gate Wars, Gordrak's Great Wa was a constant choppa in the side of the other races, most infamously freeing the god beast Fangathrak from its imprisonment by Archaon's armies, and denying the forces of Chaos and Sigmar alike access to the Maw Gate within the vast warm, warm creature's gullet. In the aftermath of the Necroquake, Gordrak's hordes have been preoccupied with looting treasures from the newly revealed storm vaults across Gur. Most impressively, the skull of the bull-headed god-beast Hammergord, which the megabosses had mounted onto a colossal battering ram. Gordrak's ultimate ambitions for his new weapon are unknown but war clans of all kinds have been seen marching towards the Gurish city of Excelsius. Stronghold the Knights Excelsior in massive numbers. If the Fist of Gork wishes to demonstrate his dominion over the realm of beasts, he could scarcely have picked a more tempting target. And there is where we are going to end the video for tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and sharing it if you can. If you have an appropriate place to share Warhammer ASMR. I will see you all later. Bye-bye.